I want to make this point because marriage is obviously very important, uh, but also even beyond the topic itself, just so we can see the difference between the worldly view of a thing, in this case marriage, and the biblical view of a thing. Again, marriage in this case. But even if you're a Christian or not married or whatever, <clears throat> just to be able to look at the, the stark differences between the biblical truth and the worldly message and how they're just completely <laughs> night and day. Now, so I want to present the biblical view. Do whatever you want. I'm not, as, as per our last segment, I'm not forcing you to do anything. I'm not vouching over here. I'm just going to lay out the differences, and you decide what's better for you, your wife, your kids, and our society at large. We're going to go through these pretty quick. <clears throat> um, this is a chart from Rick Thomas with, I think, maybe 20 differences. We'll jump around here a little bit if it's hard for you to see. All right. So uh, the worldly view on marriage is that it will solve your problems. The biblical view is that it will reveal your problems. The worldly view says marriage will bring happiness. The biblical view is that marriage leads to holiness. The worldly view says that marriage is, uh, a marriage is good if you don't argue. That's the sign of a good marriage if you don't argue. And the, the biblical view says that you get maturity through argument. The worldly view says a marriage should not be difficult. And the biblical view says, oh no, there definitely will be difficulty. Let's just stop right here. Do you see the, do you see already the, the selfishness, the selfish perspective on the worldly view of marriage, right? It should solve my problems, make me happy, not be difficult. We should never argue. Everything's gonna be easy all the time. That's the worldly view. The worldly view says marriage is about feelings. The Bible says it's about commitment. The world says a marriage should be 50-50. The Bible says love doesn't keep score. The world says it's a contract that can be broken. And is there any wonder why people break them so frequently? Because they think that it should make them happy and solve all their problems and be about me and it's about feelings. And if I don't feel good, then I'm gonna break the contract. But the Bible says it's a covenant that can't be broken. The world says love until it hurts. The Bible says love until you die. The world says it's about assigning blame. The Bible says it's about accepting responsibility. The world says either your, your spouse or you are your savior. And the Bible said Jesus is. And the world says all joy, goodness, and satisfaction should come from your spouse. And the Bible says it should all come from God. So again, whichever you want, but let's just admit how different they are. All right? Now, let's go over what the world's view is in action. This is a New York Times opinion piece. It was published just, I think it was last Friday. And the headline was, Divorce can be an act of radical self-love. <laughs> Weird. So this, this woman's argument is that her divorce, here's what she said, freed me from a relationship that was crushing my spirit. It freed my children, then five and three, from growing up in a profoundly unhealthy environment. Now you're thinking, geez, Slater, how dare you judge this woman? Maybe she was in an abusive relationship. Maybe she was being physically abused. Maybe she was being emotionally abused. And here you are gonna tell her that her safety doesn't matter and she should stay in an abusive relationship. How dare you? you Remember the patriarchy. Here's the next sentence. There was no emotional or physical abuse in our home. Oh, well then what? There was no absence of love. Even now after everything, when he walks into the room, my stomach drops the same way it does before the roller coaster comes down. Oh, it's all about feelings. I divorced my husband not because I didn't love him, I divorced him because I loved myself more. <laughs> Is that not exactly what we just talked about? That's exactly the, like, I, like, I could do a T, I couldn't make this up. The world's view on marriage is selfish. That it should bring happiness and solve all my problems and it's about feelings and should never be difficult. And this woman lived that out to a T. She broke off her marriage, which is merely a contract. She broke it off because she loved herself so much. That therefore is not a, 
covenant of service, which is the biblical view of marriage, is that it is a covenant of service. That is instead a contract of narcissism. A dear friend of mine was in the ICU for a week. All last week he was in the ICU. Couldn't do anything for himself. Couldn't do anything. Like bedpan, wife wiping his bottom. Couldn't do anything. And he called me just Saturday. He called me. First time out of the ICU, he called me. And he said, Slater, I want to tell you a little something about marriage. He said, my love for my wife has never been deeper because she did literally everything for me. And he explained all the things that she did for him, not pretty things. He said, Slater, these were not happy times. These were not happy times but their love has never been deeper. His love for her, her love for him, and their love for God. And their dependence on God has never been deeper. That's the point. That's what marriage is about. So what was this woman's problem then? Here's what she said. After I became a mother, I was still the same striving, work-obsessed, domestically challenged person I'd always been. So ambition. I made choice after choice to prioritize my career. It gave me an identity, a purpose, and the comfort of knowing I could support myself. She says her husband would often say that you're not present, um, sometimes physically, or like literally, she wasn't present when she was traveling for work, and also even when she was there, she wasn't really there. She was on her phone or thinking about other things all the time. So instead of solving that, <laughs> right, instead of admitting that was a problem, changing her ways and solving that problem, which I had to do myself, as I am also work obsessed and all the rest, I had to focus on being present in the moment. So I had to admit it was a problem, admit it was hurting my family, change my ways and solve it. Instead of her doing that, she went all in on herself and now she's liberated. See how liberated she feels if she ever goes to the ICU. So amazing that that's viewed as liberated, right? Ugh. Oh, to be unconditionally loved by my husband and to raise our children together. Yuck! What slavery! What, what oppression! She said she knows of one 38-year-old uh, newly single mother who works full-time and goes to graduate school at night, and, and she said with pride that she's now living in an apartment that she picked out and decorated and paid for all on her own. You go, girl! Good for you! She says, everything is my choice and I'm in charge. Super. <laughs> the last line of, the, uh, of this article from this woman says, my divorce let me live the life I was meant to and I view that as an accomplishment. I bet you. Wow, that was deep and insightful. I want more of that. Like, subscribe, get more.